Hello, and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. I am your host, Christy. I come to you from the Denver area of Colorado, where I live with my husband, Ron, and our two daughters, Tatum, who is 13, and Delaney, who is 10, and our uh, tuxedo kitty, Lilu, um, who has really enjoyed the fact that I have been reorganizing my stash today and have found little bits of yarn for her to play with. So she is a happy kitty. Um, you might notice I've got new glasses, and uh, I didn't realize this when I purchased the glasses, but um, because I spend so much time on the computer, uh, both with school, although not so much now with school, but uh, my, you know, my chosen profession is accounting, which means that there will be computer work, um, just like a, a daily thing. Um, I got the special thing on your glasses that helps keep your eyes from being strained by um, those lights from the computer screens and cell phones and tablets and that kind of thing. However, it's got like this blue or purple, I'm looking in the, in the little screen, a little blue purple like tinge to it. And um, so I'm going to try to remember to keep, kind of keep my head down <laughs> because it's more of an annoying glare than what I had on my old glasses. If it becomes too big of a problem, I can always wear my old glasses for my podcasting. Um, the, my prescription it actually didn't change, um, except for that my optometrist really suggested that I get bifocals. I'm not old enough for bifocals yet. <laughs> I'm only 40. Um, <laughs> I need, I do, I do need them. I, I, I've gotten to the point now where I have to take my glasses off to look at anything that, that's this close. <laughs> and, um, it's causing a problem. Um, but I'm not ready yet to have to make that adjustment. Uh, cause I know you have to kind of get used to wearing them. Uh, anyway, that all to say, uh, I'm sorry for the kind of purple glare, uh, that you might see every once in a while. Um, so, if you need to find me, I am Christy Dash Lael on Ravelry and Christy Lael without the dash on Instagram. Uh, we also have a relatively crafty podcast group on Ravelry where we have knit alongs and giveaways and all kinds of knitting chatter and fun. And. Thanks for whoever reminded me of how to put your iPhone on silent. I've now done that. We should not be interrupted with any more dings. Uh, <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is that I will be editing the video, and every time that my phone dings with a text message in the video when I'm, that I'm editing, I go and I check my phone in real life, because I'm certain that, that <laughs> that's what it is. Anyway, phone silent. Um... So yes, we have knit-alongs and giveaways and knitting chatter in the Ravelry group. We are still having our wonderful winter warm-up cowl, which will go until March 19th, I believe, which is the first day, or the last day of winter. And the idea is that you either finish or start a blanket, knit out of any weight of yarn, or crocheted out of any weight of yarn using any pattern whatsoever, or you knit something out of worsted weight or above, or crochet something out of worsted weight or above. Um, that's not a blanket. So, um, so yeah, you, it's pretty open. You can knit or crochet a lot of things. And um, the reason why I kind of included blankets in that is because I would really like to get my beekeeper's quilt, which looks like this, finished. Um, now, if you guys recall, um, I suppose I should, I suppose I should have saved this for whips, but, um, but, you know, it goes, it goes along with what I was talking about. If you guys recall, um, I, I started this 2000, 2011, I think? A long time ago, right after the pattern came out. This is the Beekeeper's Quilt by Tiny Owl Knits, by the way. And um, I liked the idea... I mean, I, I've always liked the look of scrappy, pieced um, blankets, but, you know, with the mitered square ones, you have all those ends to weave in, and I didn't want to do that, and I don't crochet yet. Um... That's on my list for this year. Um, and so anyway, I thought with 
with the beekeeper's quilt, you're just making these little, well, they're supposed to be hexa puffs, and they're supposed to be filled with um, fiber fill. However, I've made mine flat, as you can see, so I call them hexa flats. And you make a bunch of them, and then you just tie them together in the corners, like so. And I'm not giving anything away in the pattern. You can see that by just looking at the picture. Um, so I did. I tied together a bunch, and I figured, you know, these little holes aren't going to be an issue. Um, and maybe they wouldn't have been if I'd finished it in a timely manner, um, and if my children hadn't molested um, this part that I'd had. Uh, it's kind of like a like a, a couch runner is what I've been using it for, because it's only this wide. <laughs> like, that's it. Um, and it's about as long, I don't know, it's maybe a little over a yard long. So, um, so I had it on the back of the couch and it got, you know, my kids, they did their kid things. And, um, and so what I've noticed is I've got some hexa flats that are starting to come undone because I, because my own fault, I clipped them too short, even though the ends is inside, it got caught on something and it pulled the end out. And I've no also noticed that a lot of my my knots that I tied um, they're they're just coming undone, and it just looks I don't know it just I just didn't like the way it looked. So I decided instead that I was going to go through and whip stitch up the um, all the pieces, and I have started that. So this I don't know if you guys can tell, but this section right here has been fixed. <laughs> um, I haven't taken out the ties. They're still there. I, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to. Um, at this point, I just want this blasted thing done, so I am not putting a whole lot of effort into it. Um, I have this, and I have this many other hexaflats. I am going to sew those on and call it done. Whatever size it is, that's the finished piece. <laughs> um, so anyway, I worked on this for about, I don't know, maybe an hour. It felt so much longer because I really, really, really don't like this type of work. Um, and I got, you know, like this much done. <laughs> so <sighs> I want to get it done. It's my oldest whip. I have no interest in making it any bigger. I have no interest in in it at all, in any way, shape, or form. I just want it to be done. Um, but I hate this. <laughs> I hate doing this. So anyway, I wanted to let you know that I am working on my blanket for the cowl, and um, hopefully, hopefully I will have it um, done before the end of the year. Um, Maybe it'll make a lap blanket. It may not. It may just end up being something that gets stuffed, uh, you know, like set on the back of a chair. I'm totally fine with that. Or like at the end of a bed. I don't know. It, it's pretty to look at. It is pretty to look at. But, yeah, I... I should know that these kinds of, of things are not my cup of tea. Um, I do want to make the um, crocheted granny stripe blanket. Um, I think I will like that a little bit better. I will full on be using the magic knot um, method so that I don't have the ends to weave in. And I've heard that it goes faster once you learn how to do the stitch. I think I will enjoy that more. I do love knitted blankets and crocheted blankets, um, but I just, it's the same with quilts. I love the look of quilts. I don't ever, ever want to make one. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so that is my uh, contribution to our cow. But, um, let me come off of whips and go into um, finished objects. I have two finished objects to show you. 
the uh, the first one is actually one that I don't have here. Um, it is the Meadowcroft slouchy hat by Dave Barrows that I was knitting for my friend, and I took it to knit night last night so that um, we could gift it to our friend uh, Melissa, and so went ahead and did that. So what I did is yesterday after I got off work, I after I got off work, I haven't said that in so many years. Um, after I got off work, I came up here and I just recorded just a little bit about the hat. So I'm going to send you now to Past Christie to talk about that hat. So I wanted to take the opportunity to show you the Meadowcroft slouchy hat that I just finished, but have to uh, take in to knit night tonight. Oh, and by the way, uh, today I am wearing my Backshore cardigan. No, not a cardigan. My Backshore sweater by uh, Alicia Plummer, I believe. And I knit this last year out of Madeline Tosh in Downcast Donkey. No, not Madeline Tosh. Uh, the Verdant Griffin in Downcast Donkey and Madeline Tosh, Tosh DK in Oceana. This is one of my favorite um, knit sweaters. Um, it's a little bit chilly today at like 35 to be wearing um, like a, a half sleeve sweater, but um, but it was okay for for working in the office today. Um, I'm wearing a coat when I go outside. <laughs> anyway, so this is the Meadowcroft slouchy hat um, that is the yarn. It, it's a whole kit, and it came from. Um, Meadowcroft Dye Works in their yarn rehab um, in the Guatemalan Torbus colorway. And it came in this envelope with the pattern and the yarn and hat's supposed to look like that. Now, as I have mentioned before, I had a difficult time trying to figure out what colors I was supposed to use uh, at what points because the, um, the pattern doesn't tell you. So I looked at some of the pictures um, of other projects to see if I could come up with um, the right colors. I don't know if I did. I very po possibly got all the colors wrong, but I think it looks good, so we're going to go with that. I mean, it's knit, and the 85 million ends are woven in, so I'm not changing anything. <laughs> but anyway, here it is. Not on the hat. I wanted to kind of show it to you. Um, it has a fold-up brim. It's still damp. Unfortunately, I was hoping that it would be finished blocking by now, but not quite. And um, and yeah, you can see there's there's variegated and some highly tonal colors, and you just do these different charts. There's six different charts, um, and you just knit them and pick a color. Let me go ahead and put it on Fred so you can see it. So there you go. There it is on Fred. It's cute. I hope she likes it. We'll see. Um, the yarn is worsted and it came with all these little minis. And it was an interesting knit. I I have to say that I kind of feel like it was... Not enough of the color work shows, so I feel like it's kind of a waste of all that work. The hat will be very warm, of course, because it's double, doubled all the way through. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it was worth all the work. Hmm. But um, it's a little bit big. I'm hoping hoping that it'll fit her head. Um, hmm. We'll see. So anyway, there is my Meadowcroft slouchy hat. And um, I will send you back now to current Christy to um, talk about the rest of the things that I knit. Okay, so yeah, so that was that not technically not the first whip that I finished, but it's the first one that I wanted to show you. Um, she loved the hat when we gave it to her. She said that, what did she, it was so sweet. She sent um, a group text to, to myself and the lady who, who bought the yarn, the other friend. It's the word like the three of us spend a lot of time together. We have kids around the same age and we kind of are in the same stages of life, I guess. Um, 
so anyway, uh, Beth bought the yarn and asked me to knit it for Melissa, and we gave it to Melissa as a gift. And Melissa sent us a text this morning. She said, I wore my super awesome hat of pretty until bed last night. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. I'm really glad that she likes it. My uh, second whip, or second uh, FO rather, is my Hippo for New Year's socks. So this is the first pair of socks that I have finished for 2018. Um, now, if you recall, I knit 60, 61 pairs of socks last year. I will not be knitting 61 pairs of socks this year. I just, I feel like this is a year for sweaters for me. I'm very excited about knitting a bunch of sweaters. In fact, I wrote a list out of all the sweaters that I have yarn for that I really, really want to knit right now, and there are 13. <laughs> I may change my mind about sweaters in you know, like June when it starts to get hot, but um, right now I really just want to knit all the sweaters. I want to cast them all on, and I want to make them all, and I want to wear them all, and so anyway, um, but I I will make socks every month, of course, because I'm, I am a sock knitter, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be as um, a prolific, prolific, is that the word? Prolific. I won't be as prolific in my uh, sock knitting uh, this year. I don't think. Anyway, so this is Hippo for New Year's 2018. Uh, Lolo did it, has been doing a Hippo for the Holidays yarn line for um, the past year, and this is uh, the first colorway for 2018, um, and I absolutely loved it. I did not order a uh, Lil Lolo's for Heels and Toes I, I don't remember why, but I, I forgot to do so, and so I was a little bit concerned about what I was going to use for Heels and Toes. I, of course, don't need to use anything for Heels and Toes, but I do like the look of it. Uh, however, I remembered that I had some Coal Miner's Daughter in my stash, uh, a little Lolo of Coal Miner's Daughter, so I went ahead and used that, and it's perfect. There are speckles of purple, blue, yellow, orange, pink, and dark gray in here, so um, it works out very nicely, and I love the way these turned out. A very good start for the socks for this year. And that is everything that I finished. Um, no! Well, yeah. Yeah, I, that's everything I finished. I was going to say that I, well, I finished ripping out a sweater. <laughs> But I'll talk about that later. Uh, let me go ahead and get into my whips. I don't have very many. Um, I I loved being able to take that Meadowcroft slouchy hat off of my whips. I'm really hoping to kind of get those whips marked down and, and have very little... Um, yeah. Uh, I have made absolutely no progress on these socks, but I will show them to you once again. This is out of Rainy Days and Wooly dog's goth socks in the Seppa Green colorway, and I'm just making a pair of stripy socks. This goes along with my bingo card for um, Bling Your Strings. Um, Aaron has, we're doing like a crafty bingo for the year, and one of my bingo slots, uh, squares, is um, to knit my three oldest skeins in my stash that aren't Knitterly Things Vesper sock, because that's part of my box of socks. And so this is one of the pairs for that. But I um, have not been working on that sock because I have been working on uh, this sock more. And um, this is my first entry for the Box of Socks Cal, which is hosted by Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast, who also dyes Bull and Vine yarns. And I was starting to stress out because I this is still the first sock, and here we are, what is it, like the, the 24th of January. Um, but you know what? I, I recalled, I do not need to knit all 12 of um, the Box of Socks socks, one each month. Like, I don't have to have this finished by the end of January. I just need to have 12 done by the end of the year. I can totally do that. So I have taken the pressure off of myself to get this finished by the end of January. And the reason why I haven't gotten this finished is because, as I said, I'm really excited about sweaters. So um, I did knit on this 
you know, I've done some. Obviously, you can see there's where my heel will go. I've got about half of the leg done. Um, so I should have this first sock at least finished by the time I podcast next week. This is out of Knitterly Things Vesper Sock in a very old um, club colorway from 2008 called Lovely Lollipop Sky, and I do really like it. Um, even though I'm not a fan of pink, the other three colors in this stripey uh, really speak to my heart, so um, I can overlook the pink. Plus the pink, you know, it, uh, I don't like pink a lot, but whereas with black, like I don't, I won't buy stripey yarn that has a black stripe, um, because I just don't, I really like, I dislike black that much. But with pink, as long as it's not like the, 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 the primary color, um, I'm okay with it. So, um, so anyway, there you go. Uh, one sock, almost a little over halfway done. And then, as I said, the reason why I have not been knitting on my socks very much, because I'm all about the sweaters, uh, and especially this particular sweater. Uh, you guys might recall last week I showed you that I had cast on for the Find Your Fate, no, the Comfort Fade Cardi, which is the most recent fade pattern by Andrea Mowry, who is the fade queen. And I had... Um, I was about to there. I had just started to fade in the um, the second color. So my first color is Madeline Tosh um, Long Rider DK in the brass colorway. My second color is the Creative Obsession in the Come Together colorway. And then I talked to you guys about what I should do for my third color, and the um, general consensus was that I go with uh, Swoonish, Hello Swoonish in her Long Rider, no, her, um, Walker DK base in, uh, Lisa Frank Bender. I did contact her to see if she could dye me another skein, um, because you need, you're supposed to have three for the, for the third color, and I only had two. However, she's having some, I, I assume some personal issues. She said she's not able to dye at the moment, so, uh, she apologized. I, can't fault her for, you know, what goes on in her life. Um, so anyway, I'm going to just kind of jury rig it to work with uh, just the two skeins. And I will just use the three skeins that I have of my fourth color, which is also the creative obsession in Fire in the Sky. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen pictures of this, but I have gone very far <laughs> since um, uh, showing this to you guys last week. So Here's where I was last week. My um, stitch marker is on the in my progress keeper is on the inside, so you can't see it, but it's there. So I was fading into the second color, and then I faded into the third color, and then I faded into the fourth color, and then I finished a whole body. <laughs> so there you have it. The entire body of my Comfort Fade Cardi is done. And I just absolutely love it. Uh, this, this final color, I'm so glad that I have three of this one. And I'm glad, I'm, I'm really glad that, um, I'm actually kind of glad that she couldn't dye any more of the Walker DK. Uh, because I, this is my favorite. I want this to be the, like, focus color of the sweater. In fact, you remember when I was talking about my um, pavement sweater and how it really needs to be in a like a, a more variegated, a deeper, richer, more vibrant, fuller color? This is what a, a pavement sweater needs to be knit out of. The, I, I, Carrie, I'm seriously thinking about, yeah. This would be a great... I'm going to try not to buy any yarn, but, you know, seriously, I <laughs> want to have a whole sweater out of this, this colorway by itself. So anyway, as I said, I am done with the body. I don't think that I'm more than halfway done with the sweater, though, because remember, I do have the sleeves to do, and then I have that huge shawl color, um, which is going to take quite a lot of yarn. 
Um, I assume it's going to take quite a lot of yarn because I still have half a skein of this and then four full skeins of the other yarns that I haven't even broken into. Um, this is what I have left of what I used for the original fade. I used the entirety of um, the first skein of Come Together. And so, yeah, I expect that there is still quite a lot of knitting to be done. But, um, but at least I have that the body done. It looks so good, and I love it so much. And um, yeah, I'll be uh, starting the uh, first sleeve today. So expect to see more of that next week. So that is all that I have um, on the needles. But I did want to talk about two recently torn out sweaters. Uh, the first one is the pavement sweater, which is a pattern by Vera Valamaki. And I was knitting it out of these two colors of Bristol Yarn Gallery's Linden Hill base. Um, in they're like numbers. There's it's blue and like yellow. <laughs> you know this pale yellow. So I I decided I didn't like it, so I tore it out. It was a whip. I talked to you guys about it a couple of weeks ago, and I was going to I was kind of like looking at. Um, other sweaters that I could make for myself that didn't call for, because I don't have a full sweater quantity in either of these yarns. And actually, I think what I am going to do is I am going to hold this double and um, make a sweater for Delaney. If I hold it double, it'll be a DK weight yarn. And I came across a pattern for a DK weight stripey sweater that Delaney likes. And I think that she'll get more use out of it. It is 85% um, Pima cotton and 15% silk. And I just don't really like wearing cotton sweaters very much. Um, so, yeah. So I'm going to make the Gone. I'm assuming that's how it is pronounced. It's G-O-N. And it's by Marguni. Um, it is not originally in English, but it has been translated into English. And so I think that's what I'm going to make for Delaney. I think she will get a kick out of it. So I just wanted to kind of let you know that that's what this yarn is going to become now. And then lastly, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen pictures of this and pictures of Lilu helping me do this. Helping me. Um, I... <sighs> Years ago, I made, 2013 maybe, I made the Splash of Blue cardigan, which looks, supposed to look like this, um, and I knit it out of Cascade Eco in the natural color, um, and I didn't pay attention to fit in any way. I just really loved the that beautiful cable panel on the back. And um, so I knit it super fast and put it on, and it was entirely too long. Where it was supposed to kind of just fall right underneath your rear end, it came almost to my knees on me. And it was too big in the shoulders, so it would fall off. But... Um, unless I had it buttoned, but when I had it buttoned, the buttons would gape around the belly area. It was just not very flattering, and I never wore it um, out. And I thought, you know, well, Cascade Eco, you know, the Cascade Ecological Wool is not, like, the, the most snootiest of snooty yarns. It is still a decent yarn, and it goes for a decent price, and, you know, I paid for the yarn, so maybe I should make a sweater that I could at least use. So I tore it out this past week, and I have a bunch of balls <laughs> that look like this now. Um, and so I am going to uh, knit something else with this. And I think I am going to use it to knit the Washington Square uh, cardigan. I can't think of the designer, but I'll put it down here. Um, it is... Um, 
it's a sweater that I saw on uh, Barbara's podcast of the Flame and Fiber podcast. And um, I just, I loved the look of hers. In fact, before she was even talking about it, I was looking at it. And I was like, oh gosh, that's such a cute sweater that she's wearing. I wonder what that is. And I wonder if she made it. And then she starts talking about it. I'm like, oh, I want to make that. So I bought the book. Um, and it's coming. And, um, and and I was like, well, there, here's, I, I have the yarn. It was written for Cascade Eco, if I recall correctly. And so I have I have a sweater's quantity of that yarn. It's in a sweater form, but, you know, I can um, tear it out. So, yeah, that is the plan. But I am giving serious thought to dyeing this yarn. Um, it looks great. Barbara made hers in this same colorway, and it looks fantastic in this color. But I've been staring at this color as a sweater for a long time because it's been in here in my yarn room, like, taunting me to tear it out. And so... Um, I really want to kind of have it be a different color. So I'm thinking about maybe Kool-Aid dyeing it um, because I know how to do that and I don't need it to be a, like a super vibrant color but I could get a pretty Kool-Aid color and I don't know. Let me know. Um, I, I would love to dye it. I, I have proper acid dyes. I just, I've never done it before and I'm really nervous about it. <laughs> So maybe I'm just being silly. Maybe I should knit the sweater and then dye it. I don't know. I don't know. I wish that I had a friend who lived close who could show me how to dye. Like Carrie or Aaron. Could you guys just, you know, come and teach me? I don't think that's asking for too much. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. That's what that is. I just realized that I never talked about my own sweater that I am wearing. Um... This is the Vienne sweater that I knit last year. It's a pattern by Andy Satterland, and I knit it out of Malabrigo DK. Uh, Mal not in a Malabrigo. Madeline Tosh, Tosh DK, uh, in the saffron colorway. It's such a pretty colorway. I don't know that they dye it anymore, but I think it is absolutely gorgeous. It's such a beautiful, beautiful, like, orangey brown. And, um... Yeah, here's a picture of my whole person wearing it um, right after I made it last year. Okay, so that is all of the yarn on the needles. All I have left is yarn haul. Um, and I have a decent yarn haul, but mostly because um, yarn that I ordered before came. Like before the end of the year, it all came like all at once. Uh, plus I won something and yeah. So uh, I guess, let's see, let's go with what I won. Uh, so many of you were so awesome to let me know that I won a um, drawing on the Naughty Knitwits podcast um, for their socket cowl for last year and that was super duper cool. Um, so I got a skein of holiday yarns um, and this is, I guess they were doing a sock like a, like a, I don't know, a, um, a club or something, because this is, is, says Sock Villain, um, and it is in their Flock Sock Yarn Base, um, which is a 75-25 uh, Merino Nylon Blend, and the colorway is Whiplash, so it's like a Grillo. Kind of cool. And then um, the part of the prize that I was really excited about was this Studio in the Green bag. Um, I love Dr. Seuss, and I have a bag that's that has the same um, print on the fabric, but it is orange instead of yellow, um, so they're kind of like sister bags, which is kind of cool. Um, and this is a drawstring with the tree interior, and there's her, her label, Studio in the Green. But what I was really excited about is that this is one of those bags that has the Notions pouch sewn right inside. And um, it's right in the middle, and so you can knit two pairs of, or two socks at one time with, you know, have a ball on either side. So I'm excited to try that. I haven't got a bag like that. So that was cool. And then it also came with some Haya Haya stitch markers, um, which was super cool. So thank, oh, and, sorry, and a Naughty Knitwits pin. 
Um, thank you, Melissa and... No, Melissa. Thank you, Michelle and Leslie, for for having an awesome podcast and you know being so generous with your giveaways. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, next, I ordered this well before uh, the end of the year, but it was a dyed order. Um, this is by the Yarn Jar, from the Yarn Jar. Um, she does the, um, uh, what are these, Gobstopper Balls with stripies, and I just, I couldn't pass up. I think she was having a sale, maybe? I, I ordered it a long time ago, I don't remember. But, um, but this colorway, gosh, guys, this colorway, this is called Pumpkin Spice. Um, she included a little pumpkin progress keeper, and it is just all the beautiful yellows and oranges that I just absolutely love. So, yeah, I'm so excited about this. And then um, uh, Lauren at Lolo Did It um, is doing the Hippo for the Holidays. I have said that I wasn't going to be purchasing the um, skeins that I'd already made myself socks out of. However, um, I... The... The Hippo for Valentine's Day that I used last year was a different base. I can't remember what the base is called, but it wasn't her plush sock base, and it's the only one that I knit out of that base, and um, I used a pattern for those socks. I knit the Speckled Space Socks, which is a gorgeous pattern to look at. Um, and it's super fun to knit, and, um, and I think that... If I had knit, let me see, I want to say this without, like, sounding offensive. If I had knit the socks out of the plush sock base, if I knit the pattern out of the plush sock base, then I might wear the socks more often. Or if I had knit the base that I used in just stockinette socks, maybe I would have liked it more, more uh, I would have worn the socks more often. But because I knitted out of the base that I did, and I knit the speckled space socks, I just I don't wear them as much. Um, I'm I'm definitely a stockinette sock lover, and I love the plush base, the plush sock base that uh, Lolo did it has. So, so yeah. So anyway, all that to say, I decided I wanted to get another skein of the Hippo for Valentine's Day so that I could knit myself another pair of socks out of it. Plus, um, Mom was like, well, how come you don't have leftovers of that? <laughs> because I don't. Because um, I sent them to Erin, and she's going to make something beautiful for her daughter, and that's awesome. Um, so anyway, uh, I went ahead and purchased another skein of Hippo for Valentine's Day, and this is the 2018 colorway. She did make some changes. She added this um, burgundy. I think last year it was red, like proper red, and this year it's more of like a burgundy, so I that helped me justify buying another skein. Um, and I went ahead and got that burgundy, um, which is called Amazed, uh, in a little low low to make heels and toes. And um, so I will be able to make a pair for myself and a pair for my mom um, out of these. And she'll be happy. And I'll be happy. Uh, and then I got this one from the UK. I happen to... It's funny. I never really... I didn't... I was kind of surprised when this happened. I... I never was able to keep up on all of the podcasts. I, you know, I subscribed to a certain amount, and I always seemed like I was playing catch-up. You know, some of my favorites I would, of course, watch when they first came out, um, but a, a lot of them, you know, I, I, I watched them a week or two later, or sometimes I'd have to skip them altogether, and then with, um, whenever they did, like, a, um, you know, a, um, <sighs> Vlogmas, or or that kind of thing, I would just have to miss most of those, and so, um, however, now that I am out of school, <laughs> I apparently have a lot more time on my hands, even with, you know, working and still studying for, um, these tests that I have to take, um, I've, I've now found that I, like, I'm chomping at the bit for another podcast, so I've started, um, 
taking some of those YouTube recommendations, you know, the ones that are on the side. And so I came across this one podcast. And I, a lot of them, I, I have found some new ones to subscribe to, but some of them, I just watched the one and then that's it. Um, and uh, anyway, so I came across Betsy Makes podcast and she was talking about how she was having a sale in her shop. Uh, I think it was like 15% off and I just went to look because who doesn't look when there's a sale? And I saw this and um, and I decided that that had to be mine. <laughs> and so I grabbed it. Uh, this is in her perfect sock fingering weight which is 7525. It's a very soft 7525 and the color weight is ectoplasm. So it has this dark charcoal and then this lighter gray and just this beautiful neon green. I think it's going to make gorgeous socks. So excited about that. And then lastly, I can't remember who it was and I apologize, but somebody clued me into the fact that Simply Socks um, online sells uh, Christmas colorways all year long. And I happened to be watching Amy's of Stranded and um, uh, Crafts from the Third Floor um, or one other British podcaster who was talking about socks that they had made um, and they had used West Yorkshire spinners for their socks and I went huh that's a that's a uh, yarn line I haven't used before so I went and looked and yes simply socks had it and West Yorkshire West Yorkshire spinners and they had a Christmas colorway and they were having a sale. Now, not on the West Yorkshire Spinners, but uh, this is a really, really reasonably priced yarn. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed this one for my Christmas socks. I think this is like the 11th skein. I really shouldn't buy any more until I start making some Christmas socks, but I keep telling myself that I've still got, you know, I've got to make 25 or 31, <laughs> you know, because I want to have one for all of December. Um, so anyway, this is... West Yorkshire Spinners, as I said, this is in their Signature 4-ply, which is a 75-25 Merino blend. It's a very soft, you know, it feels nice. Uh, and it is in the colorway 886, which is Holly Berry. So yeah, I'll make myself a pair of uh, Christmas socks out of this. And then they were also having a sale, as I mentioned, and so um, I got some Opal in their Sunrise line. Um, and this, okay, the colorway number is 9446, and the colorway name is Melody des Tages. I'll put that down here. I don't really know what that translates to, but I thought this, if, if it wasn't going to be socks for me, it could be socks for Ron. Um, it's a nice, you know, blue-green kind of a gradient striper type thing. And then lastly, I got a skein of this. I have made socks out of Cascade Heritage before, but never out of their Heritage prints. Um, and so I went ahead and grabbed a skein of this, and I think this was maybe $10, um, and it's a 100-gram skein. Again, it's a 75-25 Merino blend. The colorway is number 23, which is Autumn looks like it's a good Christy color. So I went ahead and grabbed that. Um, so yeah, trying to, trying to, you know, just experiment with some commercial yarns as well. I mean, I love indie hand dyed yarns. Don't get me wrong. They're always going to be my favorite, but, um, but you know, commercially dyed yarns can be good too. So yeah. Okay, so that is all of my yarn haul. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get into books. I finished Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick, and if you recall from last week, this is the, the book that the movie Blade Runner was based off of. Um, and I had seen the movie Blade Runner a long time ago, probably a good 15 years ago. Uh, so I remembered some of it, but not enough, and... Um, 
<sighs> so this book was written in the mid 60s. It is a classic sci-fi book. Um, and and it's a really great story. However, I only gave this, the book three stars. Um, part of that is the way that Philip K. Dick wrote it. Um, I was talking with this with, I was talking about this with Ron last night. I kind of feel like this is like a two cents experience. Like reading this book needs to affect two sentences. Um, you need like for a, a great example of of what would help this is if while you're reading the book with your eyes using that sense, you also are hearing ambiance music um, that follows along with the, the story because Philip K. Dick makes these very sudden changes. You know, he's going this way and all of a sudden he shoots that way and there's not there's not a very good transition. It is very sudden. It jolts you and if you're not paying close attention, you kind of miss it. You go down a couple, you know, lines down the book and you're like, wait, what? That's where the ambiance music would have been um, perfect. You know, the, the characters are going this way with the conversation and everything's, you know, playing light and, you know, nice background music and then all of a sudden one character says something that changes the whole thing and the music changes and so you experience that you get the feel out of the, the the full experience of that change and I don't think that just reading this book I was able to really fully experience that I think that if it had a musical ambiance that would have made it better there should be somebody who does that it would have to be I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe when we have androids that um, are at the level where they can pass for humans, um, we'll be able to have like mental music that will play in your brain while you're reading a book. Because it, because, because everybody reads at different speeds, and you need to have it shift. The music has to shift right at the right spot, like in a movie. So anyway, there you have it. I'm glad that I have read it. Um, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. I just feel like it would have been better with, with music. <laughs> so there you go. And what I am listening to on audio, um, and you might, a lot of you might be surprised that I haven't read this book before, but I haven't, uh, is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Um, this book, this is another fairly old one. When did this one come out? 2005. So, you know, almost 13 years old, this book. Uh, and it's, they've made a movie out of it. Um, and I never got around to reading it, but, um, but I had it on my audio and I had it in this and I was looking for something to read, um, to listen to. And so I picked this up and I am pretty decently in like two thirds of the way through. Oh, this book is breaking my heart. Um, I am feeling very connected. I, well, you know what I have to say that, you know, so if you're not familiar with this book, this is set in Germany in right at the beginning of World War II, um, and on. And, um, any, any story that is set in Germany in World War II, um, or, you know, basically in Europe in World War II, uh, is going to be heart-wrenching. Um, it just, it just is. It was just an awful, awful time in history and so many people lost so many things. Uh, not just, not just in Europe, of course, um, you know, a lot of Americans, uh, as well and Canadians, you know, just generally the world was a sad place <laughs> in World War II. Um, but, you know, being in Germany, Set, being set in Germany in World War II, it, it is especially sad. Um, and uh, I am, you know, it's so well written and it is so uh, entertaining and I just, I really am enjoying the reading of it, but then I, I know, I know that it, something 
because of the nature of the setting and um, and and because there were very few happy endings uh, in that in that time I I'm I'm preparing myself for lots of tears and heart-wrenching moments at the end of this book and like I, I, I I'm so enjoying it that I just want to keep reading because the, the story is so intriguing but I'm like well no I want to slow down because gosh, it's gonna break my heart and I don't want my heart broken but oh, it's really good it's really good I, I understand now why so many people have raved about it is a really good book and I highly recommend it and I very very much recommend it on audio the narrator does a fantastic job with this book so yeah if you if you are an audiobook listener I would really recommend that um, yeah and when I finish it I will watch the movie because I do have it on DVD even though I've never seen it uh, so yeah well, I'll let you know what I think of the movie too Okay, guys, I think that that is it. Um, so I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday, and I will talk to you next week. All right, happy knitting. Bye.